Urbix, issue number one from Europe Comics. This is by the same place that did the Vesper uh, issue that I did a review on a few weeks ago. And I talked about how that was like one of the greatest like issues I've ever read. And uh, this is another really, really good series. It just started. Issue one just came out. Urbex. So anyone who doesn't know what Urbex is, Urbex stands for, I believe, uh, Urban Exploration or Urban Explorer. Basically, our two main characters are Urbex. They're Urban Explorer. For anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's people that go and they like explore urban landmarks and buildings and structures and stuff like uh, abandoned buildings, underground stations or tunnels, like things that people shouldn't be, things that are kind of like off limits to the public. People go and they explore that, they take pictures of it, things like that. And that's what our two characters are. Our two characters are Alex and Julie. They are, I can't tell by their what their age is based off of the, the, the way the art style is. I want to say maybe they're high schoolers. I think saying that they're middle schoolers might be selling it, might be a little too much of a stretch, even though they look super young. I'm going to guess high schoolers. So they they see this uh, this mansion and they break into it and they start exploring the place and they come across uh two girls who uh one of them starts singing the other one like argues and starts telling you know stop singing you're freaking them out and uh alex jumps over a railing lands on the floor with no problem julie follows after him and they both run out and they both realize holy crap, how were we able to do that? There's no way we should have been able to to jump from that high without any problems whatsoever. Alex wants to go back and uh, check out the place the next day. And while there, he discovers, uh, he, he talks to one of the citizens that lives near the area. And the guy says, uh, what are you talking about? Like that villa was demolished five years ago. And Alex goes to the, the same location and realizes that, yeah, the, the building is actually down. It's been demolished. And uh, we see Alex at school and people make fun of him. He's kind of a klutz and stuff like that. Um, but Julie doesn't care. She's still friends with him. And then we have like a subplot with the uh, the mom and sister. Where the mom and sister are constantly questioning what Alex is doing at night. And Alex just makes up an excuse that he's in a metal band. And uh, the sister doesn't believe him. And so that's the whole like subplot. I'm kind of just, I'm going to, I'm going to brush over that subplot because it's not really important. What's more important is the stuff between Alex and Julie. So they go back and uh, they go to the same location the next day and they see that the villa is back up again. But this time it's like at night. So they're starting to think, okay, maybe the villa is only up at night. But how come no one else sees it? Maybe we're the only ones that see it. But why are we the only ones that can see this thing? What the hell is going on? And inside we see the ghosts and the ghosts are kind of arguing with each other. One of them wants to talk to Julie and Alex. The other one doesn't and we don't really know why and i don't feel like we ever find out why in this issue but alex and julie decide to go explore another location just something a lot more simpler something um to kind of ease their their worries and tension and during this exploration um alex goes in for a kiss because he has a crush on julie and he hits his head on the doorknob before he can kiss her. And she doesn't notice because she has her eyes closed. And they discover this door. And the door is brand new. Like everything around the door is covered in graffiti and dust and dirt. But this door is pristine. So they open up the door. And they see a weird um, situation. There's a living room. There's a family eating dinner. We see this small child named Daniel. And, um, you know, the mom's like, do you want, you know, a piece of cake, Daniel? And Daniel says, oh, okay, thank you. And he eats some of the cake. And immediately after he finishes, he says, I'll be right back. And he, he leaves the room and then he, he throws up. At first I thought he was throwing up like blood or something. But no, it's just because the way the cake is. So uh, this plays a part later on. That's why I, I'm mentioning it now. So just follow with me for the moment. <laughs> but yeah, the... the Alex and Julia, of course, freaked out. They're like, okay, we saw this. The, the, the store wasn't here before. This family, it, there's no way reason for them to be in this area, especially the way like, it, the, the room does not match the rest of the building. 
They also didn't see us, but we can see them, we can hear them, but they couldn't see or hear us. What the hell is going on with us? Like, what, what's happening? So then they decide to go to the villa the next night. Um, and they're like, okay, let's, let's go in, let's take some pictures to see if we can figure out what's going on. And while there, they see the, the two ghosts again, only instead of children, the ghosts are now babies. And one of them is, uh, again, trying to scare the, the two characters. And the other ghost baby is trying to tell uh, the other ghost, like, stop doing that. And they, they get chased by the dog, by this dog, and they, 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 they rush out. And now they're like, okay, what the hell is going on? Why, why were the ghost girls, why are they now babies? Where did this dog come from? Is the dog a ghost as well, or is the dog always there? Why didn't we see the dog the first time? Again, more things aren't making sense. And we see the ghosts again inside their, uh, the villa. And now the ghost is a grown woman. And she, they're, they're arguing with each other. And then we find out that one of them is not really there. The, the ghost woman is arguing at a mirror, uh, a mirror reflection of herself. And the mirror reflection is arguing back. And so now we're starting to piece together that they're, they're not two people but they're one person that's been split they're basically a yin and yang of each other that's why like one one of the ghosts is very aggressive and the other one's a lot more passive one of them is more angry and the other one's more friendly they're the same person but they're split from each other yeah what we see we see more of uh of their lives and their school life and things like that and they go on another um, urban explore, uh, exploration, this one with uh, another couple. And they go into this other new building. And while there, they, they, see, um, they, they, they see Daniel's mother and father arguing with Daniel's uncle. uncle. Daniel's basically, uh, they're discussing how Daniel th is thinking about being a social worker. Like, you know, it's, it's a great job. He wants to help kids. And the uncle is kind of talking about how that's stupid and things. So the uncle is kind of coming across like a dick. And again, we'll see why later on. But uh, once again, only Alex and Julie can see this. The other couple that's with them don't notice. And they're like, why, what are you guys staring at? So now they're trying to piece more of this together. They're, they're like, okay, it looks like the flashbacks that we're getting are all of the same person, right? Like that's the only thing that can make sense to us. Let's go in and check out another place. So once again, they go with the couple and they check out this other place. And while there, they see who they think is Daniel uh, talking to uh, his boss. And the boss is basically like arguing with him, telling him kind of kind of he has the qualifications for a better job. But instead, he's taking this crappy job and he's letting the boss bully him around. And once again, Alex and Julia are trying to figure out, OK, why does he keep doing this? Why is he allowing everyone to, to like, just brush over him and, and to steamroll him? Why isn't he standing up for himself? Okay, we got we to gotta explore some more. Maybe the ghost girls will know something. Maybe we'll find out something inside the house. Because it seems like the house is where we keep developing the, these powers. Like where the, these powers of us being able to jump and run on walls and shit. Like all this seems to be happening in this house. So let's go check out the house. So they go check out the house. They get attacked by the dog, but they think, okay, the dog is a ghost, so the ghost dog won't be able to hurt us. But the ghost dog bites Julie and actually, like, causes her to bleed. So Alex kicks the dog off, grabs her, and helps carry her towards the exit. And as she's doing that, and as he's doing that, he sees the two ghost girls. And now they appear to be pregnant. And once again, Alex and Julie are confused, but they, he grabs Julie and he carries her um, out of the, the villa as the dog chases them. And the dog can't go past the gates, so they're they're safe. And then, um, you know, Julie takes off her hoodie so that they can stop the the bleeding. But then they realize that the bleeding is disappearing and the bite marks are gone. So the dog can only affect them when they're inside the the building. It can't once they leave, it, it goes away. It, like, basically, like anything else inside this villa, as soon as you go past the gates, it disappears. And uh, they find this plaque. And the plaque matches the, the villa, and then they discover that this villa is, um, it belongs to Dr. Wilfred Gruber, a psychiatric clinic. And so now they're trying to find information on this guy, but they're finding very little information. They go and they explore another building, and they, they see another situation. This time they, they see uh, 
we see the the uncle and the uncle is basically having a conversation with him like uh you know why does this idiot daniel why does he want to help kids like where the hell did he come up with the idea could, could he be remembering something either way he better keep his mouth shut so we, we get hints that okay the uncle did something and he's trying to hide it and once again now they get attacked by the dog but they're kind of confused like why is the dog attacking us in this building when the dog has only ever appeared to us inside the villa like what's going on here but of course they can't stop to think about this they, they gotta run so they they actually jump out of the, out of the building and there are multiple fours up but they're they're able to to land safely on the ground using some parkour and stuff and once again they're like what the hell is going on with this why are we getting these powers like this doesn't make any sense why is this dog here the dog wasn't here before it is is the dog a manifestation of Daniel? Like everything we see seems to be revolving around Daniel. Why? And they even sneak into um, another house and they see another vision with Daniel. This time Daniel is arguing with his wife. And the, the argument is that Daniel gets called to work at a construction site and the wife's like, you know, screw that. Don't do that. Like that guy's a slave driver. You have a degree in education and you're working these lousy, dangerous jobs. Why? Um, and Daniel's like, you know, he said I had to come in right away. And the wife's like, no, tell him that he can build the tallest tower in the city without you. Like, you're, you're better than this, Daniel. And that's when the two are like, okay, it seems like everything has to revolve around, everything in here revolves around Daniel. Let's, let's, but let's make sure. So once again, they go into a building with the, uh, the other couple. And then they see the same argument with the, the parents and the uncle. And while there, they see Daniel hiding behind the couch, listening to this conversation. Daniel is now a teenager. And that's when he realized, okay, everything here is revolving around Daniel. And one of the visions, the, uh, Daniel's wife mentions the, the tallest tower in the city. Let's find the construction site for the tar tallest tower in the city, and let's see if we can find Daniel, and let's confront him on this. So they, they find Daniel. They try to talk to him. Um, but one of the bosses shows up and basically kicks them off the property. And during this, we realize, uh, we see the ghost girls and the ghost dog in the villa. And we realize that anytime the kids, uh, Alex and Julia, are close to solving what's going on, the dog seems to be pissed off. The dog doesn't want them to, to find out what's happening. He doesn't, that's why he keeps trying to scare them away from talking to the ghost girls. That's why he keeps trying to scare them away when they're seeing visions of Daniel and stuff. But eventually they, they confront Daniel and they, they, they mention, um, you know, why, why are you scared of dogs? What's going on? And Daniel, I guess maybe he, uh, he sees like, why, how do they have all this information that, when I've never told anybody? And he's like, okay, maybe, maybe there's something that I've been hiding and I need to get off my chest. So he tells them what happened. He tells him about how he used to, uh, you know, go visit his uncle. And his uncle had this scary dog. But uh, the uncle would just say, oh, he, he's not dangerous. He just wants to play. And then the, the uncle says he wanted to play too. And then the uncle would push him on the swing. And then his hands would start moving. And he will start touching him inappropriately. I'm, I'm sure you guys can figure out where, where this is going. Uh, and Daniel's like, I don't like this game. This is a bad game. Um, and the uncle's like, all right, I, but this will be our little secret. Don't tell anybody. And the boy's like, no, like this is a bad game. I'm going to tell mom and dad. So the uncle actually grabs Daniel, throws him inside a pin with the dog, and the angry dog is basically barking and yelling at Daniel, like, and Daniel can't get out. And the uncle's like, I'm not going to let you go out unless you promise not to tell anybody. Got it? And so Daniel says, yes, yes, okay, anything. So that's why we see Daniel... Uh, because of this trauma, that's where the dog comes in. That's why Daniel has trouble saying no to people is because of this. Because his uncle was inappropriately touching him and then threatened him by using the dog. So that's when Alex and Julie says, you, you got to you got to do something. And you know what you got to do to get rid of this dog that's ruining your life. Like you're better than this, Daniel. You, you have a, a better degree. You're letting people walk all over you. You're, you're, you're holding on to this burden that you don't need to let it go. And you let that go by, by telling people what happened. So Daniel goes and he 
tells his mom and dad about his uncle inappropriately touching him and his parents break down because they had no idea this was going on and they hug daniel and they realize that all, all, all the, the 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 trouble that they were giving him when he was younger and stuff it was because of the uncle and they they're ashamed that they didn't know about this and that they you know they, they feel bad for daniel so daniel comes back the next night and tells them that you know um it was intense, but my parents have been wonderful. Like I, I feel like a huge burden has been lifted off my, my shoulder. Like I can't thank you guys enough. My like now, you know, the, the risk of telling the truth is is gone. Um I feel free. I, I, I can be able to get my life back on track. Alex and Julie go into the villa the next day and they see the dog and the dog is dead. And uh because they were able to solve Daniel's problem. The, the thing the the, the 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 shadow that was holding Daniel back is now gone and there's more setting up for like the next big uh thing but I'm, I'm gonna stop it there because I don't want to spoil everything basically this issue was awesome this series is pretty much uh persona meets urban exploration this as I was reading this this reminds me straight up of persona where these people are they're literally jumping into, at least in this case, they, they jumped into Daniel's past and his, his shadows and they confronted it and they were able to help him defeat this thing that was hanging over his head and now he's a better person. Well, now he can get his life back on track. He, he, he feels like this weight's off his shoulder and now the shadow, the, the, the monster that was holding him back is dead. So now they've, they've defeated that obstacle and now it's on to the next one. So it, it feels very much um, like Persona with the twist. And as a huge Persona fan, like I, I freaking I love that. The the artwork, I, I enjoyed the artwork. It's very stylized, but also very well done and beautiful, especially with the coloring and things. Like, So yeah, maybe anyone who's tired of American comics and doesn't feel like reading manga for whatever reason, maybe you guys should check out European comics. I don't just mean Europe Comics, the publisher, but I mean, definitely check them out because the few stuff I've read from them have been freaking amazing. But go check out European comics in general because it seems like every European comic I check out has just been a freaking blast. Like, I haven't been disappointed yet. Granted, I haven't read that many of them, but the ones that I have have just blown my mind with how gorgeous the artwork is and how beautiful and well done the story is. And that's what this issue, this issue is freaking amazing. I, this, this is a, a, an awesome, awesome issue. And I, I hope it keeps going. The reason I say that was because, uh, the, uh, the Vesper, I have no idea what's going on with Vesper there, there, I did the, the video for the, the Amazon. And then I looked up to see if there was going to be more, but there's, I, I can't find any information on, on the follow-up, but there has to be because the way that that issue ended. It's like a huge cliffhanger. It's like we, our journey is not done. But all I can find information on is like there's a, an art book. There's a video game coming out. But I can't find any information on any upcoming issues. So I have no idea what's going on there. I there There is no like to be continued at the end here. But it's obvious that the story is not done. We, we, we're literally setting up for like the next the next arc or the, the, the next um, the next story the next mystery that has to get solved like we, we literally just set up a new mystery so it can't end on this issue so i'm hoping that this is one of those where it's gonna you know we're gonna get more issues i'm a little bit worried that we're not just because there's no hint that there is this is by the same publisher europe comics that did vespera so i don't know but i hope it does because this has been freaking amazing and i I enjoy the characters. I like the artwork. I love the premise. I, I love where this is going. This is uh, a freaking fantastic. This is a nine point. You know what? God, I'm I'm hold. I'm gonna say this is a nine point five out of ten. The only thing holding back from being a perfect score is that it, there's no closure. But I'm assuming there's no closure because we're gonna be continuing. So if we're gonna be continuing, and then we see this, you know, to the end. And depending on how that wraps up, this could be like a perfect series. So far, the the only thing keeping this from being perfect is that we have an open-ended ending that sets up 
for the next arc or the next mystery that got to, that needs to be solved. So because of that, if this is all we get, it is it, kind of a, I don't want to say a slap in the face. There, there, there's questions that needs to be answered. We, like I said, we have the, the mystery set up, uh, the next mystery set up. So we need to see the conclusion of that mystery. We, we have no idea why they're getting these powers, why it's only them two. How come they're the only ones that can see this? We have no idea what the whole clinic and the villa has to, you know, where that story is going. We got nothing about the ghosts. We just know that the ghost girls apparently were patients of this clinic and they they seem to be yin yang mirror opposites of each other and one of them wants to help wants to get the kids to, to help the other one doesn't want to get the kids involved so we have these questions that we don't have answers to so this can't be a one-off so because of that i can't give this a perfect score but this is as close to perfect as i've ever given anything that's how great it was so if you can find urbex please check it out. It is phenomenal. It's, it's amazing. It's one of the greatest things I've ever read in terms of comic books. And I don't say that lightly. It's it's fantastic. I I, I, I loved it from beginning to end. And I, I'm, I'm sitting here, as soon as I'm done with this recording, I'm going to be looking up when issue two comes out, if there is an issue two, fingers crossed that there is. And, uh, and yeah, th this, this is freaking great. So there you go. Check, check out Urbex issue number one by Europe Comics. It's phenomenal. It's one of the best things I've ever read. Like it's that good. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know your thoughts. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope to see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Later. So what'd you guys think of that video? Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that bell for a notification. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far, and I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.